The voice of women. The voice of women. Ninety one point seven. On the big question this morning, we'll still be talking about COVID nineteen, and we'll be taking a special look this morning on the response team and women representation, which is a very key integral part to bringing an end to the spread of this coronavirus. And joining me this morning would be the Zona Women Leader for Southwest APC, Kemi Nelson. Good morning. Good morning. How yes. are you? I'm very fine. How are you doing this morning? I, I hope you are staying safe. I, I'm doing my very best. And you, Ma? Okay. Same here. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, we have a few things to talk about this morning. Uh, we'll be looking at um, COVID-19 response team and women representation. But before we hit the question straight off, uh, I'd like to get what is your overview of this particular COVID-19 pandemic? To say the least, it, it is a war. Hmm. It is a war that we must win. Okay. It is a war that we must win so that we do not lose all our best mm. to this coach. Okay. And uh, it's also um, an opportunity for us to think deeply and um, right all the wrong mm. that we have hitherto in the past not paid attention to, mm. especially of the health system in this country. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the very first question, like you have said, uh, I, I really appreciate your response this morning. It seems like women have little or no representation across various tax force units created for COVID-19 pandemic response. We specifically noted uh, that Women's Affairs Ministry was not included or is not included in the committee set up by the federal government. The United Nations even advised that women and girls should be at the center of the COVID-19 response and planning. And why is this not the case even at state level in our country? Could this be an oversight or is it a case of Nigerian women do not matter? How can this be addressed? You have made a very valid observation. Hmm. But I want to say clearly that a thing couldn't have been a deliberate miss. Okay. Because if you look at the, um, the competition as we speak, the person in the, in, in the forefront of all of this, especially in the distribution of the relief packages, and um, um, so many other things that the support is actually a woman. That's the uh, Sadia Farouk, who is the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs. Okay. But that does not preclude government from involving the Minister of Women Affairs. I, 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 I want to believe that it must be an oversight. But um, most importantly, the woman that is actually handling all the distribution of relief materials for the response and the packages is actually a woman. What better team? What what better team represent or would be able to properly represent women, if not the Ministry of Women Affairs in the country? And if such ministry is being excluded uh, from the response team to actually handle COVID-19, um, according to World Health Organization, we have a lot of nurses who are in the front line right now, uh, yeah, women. who are women battling uh, the, the fight against COVID-19. So, what what better ministry to represent women would be needed to be part of the response team? Like I said, I I agree with you totally that you know the Ministry of Women Affairs indeed should have been co-opted into that presidential task force. In the same vein, I said it could be a myth, and it's an expensive one. I must say to you, and then they, I mean, we can still push for it. You know, if they have not remembered to do it, I think we as women okay. should to, to speak up mm. for this inclusion. Okay. Like you said, most of the people in the front line, the nurses are women. Mm. They are women. And um, it's not enough to give us only Sadia. Sadia is doing so much because um, of her experience, her background and her experience. You know, she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot. It's quite cumbersome. But having uh, the representative of the women affairs ministry will not uh, be a misplaced thing. I think we can still push for it. All right. So you, you still believe that it can still be pushed for? 
Oh, yes, oh, yes, we can, we can. Okay, we can. Uh, all right, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. This is the big question I am having a conversation with this morning with um, Zoro Women Leader, Southwest APC, Kemi Nelson, and we're talking about the response team and women representation with regards to COVID-19. My very next question would be, this lockdown has led to a rise in gender-based violence. Statistics shows that a 64% increase in legal state, according to the uh, W, uh, that is the Women at Risk International Foundation and Women Radio, also with cases of violence and abuse of women in Lagos and Ogun State. Now, what extra measures are in place to protect these vulnerable women and children who are isolated and stuck at home with their perpetrators? Well, I, I would agree less with you that um, the women are really going through a lot. Mm. Many women, because the husbands are at home, okay. they wake them, mm. they do all sorts, they beat them, they have all the time to do all the beating. Okay. So, I mean, there's no doubt that um, it's quite high at this point in time. But so far, legal state is the worst state in gender-based violence mm. since the outbreak of this COVID-19. But the, the good the good news is that the governor of the state, Mr. Governor um, uh, Sawolu, okay. he has taken steps, even before now, mm. empowering the domestic violence response team okay. under the Ministry of Women Affairs with the needed support. Mm. I have been in constant touch with the commissioner for the Women Affairs because I'm not closing, closing with her project to alleviate the plight of vulnerable women in the society, okay. and also providing advisory roles based on my experience as the pioneer commissioner of the, of the ministry mm. in that state. Okay. And you see, my office, even now, you know, gives financial support to a lot of our grassroots women yes. and constantly address our community leaders on ways to protect our women mm. and children against all this violence. Yes. That is very, very important. What advice would you have to women in particular with regards to those who are still, um, uh, and it would, let me not use the word refuse, but are finding it difficult to speak out uh, in a time like this when there is a lot that are women that are being violated or were experiencing domestic violence. How can, what advice do you have to them right now? Well, I, I must say that um, Lagos is ahead of all the others in mm. terms of um, building confidence in the women to speak up. Okay. I also saw one um, a video some time ago. A woman, she had to run out of the house mm. pleading for help. And the husband was running after her. Because she said she's, the man has been battering her, the man has been doing all sorts, and she's tired, she's having pain, she's this, she's that. I mean, for her to have done that, that shows the level that legal state has pushed um, its advocacy, you know, okay. uh, in, in, in the state. Hmm. All right, let's move on this morning. Gender inequality is a major cause and effect of hunger and poverty. Now, it is estimated that 60% of the currently hungry people are women and girls. Now, how can we address this anomaly in Nigeria and focus on giving more to women in terms of security, health benefits, and other palliatives during this trying period of COVID-19? Um, good one, yes. Yeah. Um, if you if you look at the stimulus, uh, I'm I'm going to speak about Lagos because Lagos is a case study for anybody that wants to be honest in this fight um, against COVID-19. The stimulus package being distributed to various quarters in Lagos to contains a number of food essentials necessary for the nutrition and support of the women. Um, so far, there has been a strategic packaging to ensure that uh, the needs of the families are actually covered at this period. Um, I have a meeting this week. I'm this week. I think we must also improve on this. I want to enjoin our governor, Mr. Governor, to please add specific things that the women will need at this time for their hygiene. Sanitary pads for the girls. And the women, I think you should form part of whatever okay. is being given, given mm. out to these vulnerable young girls at this period. God. Then, very recently, the governor made a pronouncement in Lagos State okay. that all hospital bills 
outside of COVID-19. If you go to any government hospital for anything, even for the new way, hmm. they won't have to pay any money. Okay. Which is targeted at the women. Hmm. Yeah. And in terms of security, okay. you also mentioned security. Yes. One good thing going for Lagos um, is that um, the man that is our, um, the Commissioner of Police presently, Akim Odumosu, had worked in Lagos for several years. Because I remember the work because when I was even in the cabinet in 1999. Okay. So he knows Lagos like the back of his hand. Okay. And um, he is so he, our um, Commissioner of Police now, and he has assured us that um, he's on top of his, uh, of his game. Okay. And then um, I must say we have very few people in Lagos. We haven't had of too many robberies, you know, it's just fine between a recent time. And then um, we see that two houses, even there, all these um, cultists, these young, young boys, mm. from areas where they have been threatening people, okay. um, he's been able to stand it. Mm. You know, so that, that shows that uh, the man that is on top of it, uh, 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 that is heading our police force in legal state now, he has he knows Lagos inside out. All right. Now, you as the Zona Women Leader of the Southwest of the ruling party, what other step would be taken to ensure that women are properly represented at the state level of COVID-19 response and planning? And how can we mainstream women holistically in all areas as we come back to COVID-19? If you look at the, the, the two candidate states in, in, in um uh, for the lockdown, that's Lagos and Ogo. Let's use Lagos and Ogo. The commissioner for health, you know, the state is a woman, and she's on top of this fight. And then in Lagos State, the um, the lady, the, the, the commissioner for a group, who is a man, is being assisted by a special advisor, who is also a woman. So for Lagos, Lagos State has never been been wanting in the areas of having women take charge of so many things. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And before I let you go, I'd like to have what would be your COVID-19 advice to women? There are women. Please stay safe. The pandemic is real. Mm. It is very real. And you know, when things like this happen, you don't want to lose your husband. You don't want to lose your children. So we are always at the receiving end. So please, as our women, take special precautions. And we'll be, God will help all of us and we'll, we'll win this war by God's grace. And so, our women, stay safe, stay safe. If you, if you say stay indoors, please stay indoors. Mm. There's nothing you're looking for out there mm. other than death. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I have been speaking with the Zona Women Leader, Southwest APC, Kemi Nelson, who actually has been speaking on the response team and women representation. WFM 91.7.